So when you're on final and you want to do that cleansing breath, I like to do it also on base leg. Inhale fully, hold it for a moment. Slowly let it out. For me, that's the most powerful cleansing breath as opposed to what I call dumping the exhale. <sighs> that, that to me, that doesn't cleanse my mind. That doesn't soften my body. It's a full inhale expansion of the rib cage. Hold it, slowly come over the hill. And like a hissing noise when the exhale. It, that for me is the answer. To add a layer of that, um, that, in my teaching, in the context of skydiving, you know, preparing people to sort of become their inner pilot fully with their all access to all their skills, I find that it's a three breath process. Mm -hmm. The first one relaxes us, where we release the stress, we release the, uh, the burden of judgment, uh, of shame, of being afraid. We release the tension in our physiology. But the second breath is a crystallization of focus on the present moment outside, right? What's happening in the motion across the ground? What's happening, the cloud layer, the other canopies that are here, what layers are they at? That's the chest pieces that I have to deal with in terms of traffic, right? So the second breath is about opening into focus. The third, after you've you know sort of seen that mental map of the pattern that you intend to fly, all that in that this, that second breath, I just see it in an instant. The third breath is when the inner child comes back. That's where you hear the music and you feel good. It's like yeah, this is great. I'm jumping. You know, you kind of let that back in. You know, the yogis are all about oh, you know, they call uh, woo woo. You know, like too much. You know. Oh, and with the next exhale, oh, sometimes I got to admit it, I want to kill him. I admit it. <laughs> <laughs> Too much woo-woo has no power. You need that inner child and the power of the inner athlete to bring back the, you know, that liveliness, you know, mm -hmm. the uh, almost like uh, the, the energy of chi in some cultures, others they call prana. Mm -hmm. um, and Wilhelm Reich, I don't know if you studied his works, he studied organ energy. Mm -hmm. His original uh, series of books and focuses, he actually studied with Freud originally and then expanded beyond and kind of mm -hmm. got rid of some of the things that he didn't like about mm -hmm. Freud. But his concept was about organ energy, that the, the real life energy is directly related to root and separate second chakra orgasmic sensation the the body changes and you can he called that the same energy it's all the same thing and you can measure it when somebody gets negative emotion in their skin you can actually measure their uh how much organ and energy and fear there's none so we don't heal as fast whatever so he actually equated joy with this orgasmic energy peaking and I think that a lot of our culture is not about that. But I noticed that most people aren't allowing the peak experience, you know, where you surrender the adult attitude. You surrender the, the yeah, but judgments of got to be careful. Mm -hmm. and you stop being so damn careful and you just trust yourself in a dynamic flowing yes. Yes.